Rebuilding is the common pathway to creating a championship team in many sports. However, it is not a guaranteed method of success. Sometimes it works like a charm and leads to multiple titles, while other times it can veer off path and lead to disappointment. I'm here with Josh Toback and Peter Fortunato to discuss the best and worst rebuilds in sports history. Josh, let me start with you. What's the best rebuild in sports history? So I'm going to start this by telling you guys a story. It's 1989. The Cowboys have had one coach their entire franchise's history, Tom Landry. He has a terrible season, the worst season in a very long time, and he gets fired. And fans are furious. Then this guy, Jimmy Johnson, comes in after having one of the best collegiate street streaks ever with Miami. And then they trade away Herschel Walker with for multiple draft picks, and everyone thinks they're insane. And they go 1-15 in their first year. And everyone starts to lose faith. Then they draft a guy named Emmett Smith with those traded draft picks. And then they end up winning three out of four Super Bowls a few years later. That is the best rebuild ever. <clears throat> no contest. Golden State Warriors, the current Golden State Warriors has to be the best rebuild right now. Started in 09 when they drafted Stephen Curry and it expanded on into 2011 when they drafted Klay Thompson and then it completed the puzzle in 2014 when the, with the hiring of Steve Kerr. But that's Kerr. not a rebuild, that's just building your team through the draft. The rebuild is literally getting rid of your key players and building but when up you've, again. when you've been an entire organization where the Warriors have been, they've never been good. And when you start but drafting well... rebuild implies that the team's been good, they fell off, and then they've been good again. Like, the Cowboys, well, well, have the Cowboys great, were America's the Cowboys team good. in the 70s. Yeah, the Cowboys were America's team in the 70s with Tom Landry, and they fell off. And then they had to rebuild by firing Landry and getting but rid of a lot of their players, a lot so of So you don't players. consider a rebuild starting from nothing and just going up. You have to be at the top. A rebuild from... implies that you've been built before. The Warriors did not have any history before 09, well, arguably. But that's the... That's, what it is because they've rebuilt it from nothing. It's considered but a rebuild. Re like, that's just building. Building through the draft. Rebuilding and Like, the Cowboys were America's team. They'd been in multiple Super Bowls. They had two rings with, with Roger Staubach and Tom Landry and that great team. But the thing is about the Cowboys, for them to be so dominant in the 90s and the 80s because of, because they were dominant in the 80s too. They just, the 49ers were also really good. It's just building that team and building that kind of, like, quota well, so if important. you're considering rebuilding, then let's consider this. The Golden State Warriors are rebuilding the NBA. We're seeing a whole generation of right, so Warriors, we Cowboys, two teams yeah. with successful rebuilds, depending on your definition. Peter, what's the worst rebuild in sports history? Sacramento Kings. They have not won okay. a championship since 1951, and they have been off the map. They haven't had a good player since DeMarcus Cousins in a long time, especially they had a good run in the early 2000s where they went to the Western Conference Finals, but after 04, they have not been on the map in... NBA history. But the thing is, when is tanking just bad GMing? Like, the, te the Kings have had so many GMs in and out of their office. And honestly, you can say the same about my team, the Browns. Ever since they got completely manhandled by the NFL in 1995, they came back in 99, and they have not been relevant at all. They no, had one good hold season. Hold on. No, but the thing I have the problem with the Browns is that they had a parade this year for losing, for going 0 16. The Kings aren't the, that bad though. But the, the Browns Kings are, are not that well publicized. And they're the King, constantly failing. The Kings have not been publicized as well as the Browns have been. The Browns have been publicized very well for stinking. And while you have but the they're Kings, so they're not but in they're the still media. Bad. They're still going 0 and 16. The thing about the Kings is they're mediocre. They're not. I mean, they are bad, but they're not. They're not 0 and 16 bad. They're not going 0 and 82. They're not going 9 and 73 like the 76ers are trusting the process. The thing about the Browns, right? They've gotten, they've had more GMs in there in the short time they've been back in the NFL, more coaches than they had in their entire history before they came back. And they've had 27 quarterbacks since they've came back in 1999. That is ridiculous. They've been rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding. And honestly, after last year's draft, I thought they'd be good this year. They got three really good first round picks in Jabril Peckburs, Miles Garrett, and David Njoku. Then they drafted a Sean Kaiser and it was all downhill from there. But here's the, they're drafting good players, but they still have stick with the Sacramento Kings. They have not they haven't done anything well. They haven't been in the news as well as the Browns have been, but they haven't had great drafts. The Browns are in the news because they're failing at rebuilding. Exactly. They literally the failed Kings, to draft a the, player during during the trade. The Kings trade are line. not in the media just because they are, they stink so bad. Just because That's just a mediocre rebuild. That's not a bad rebuild. It's a It's a terrible rebuild, rebuild cuz how do you not win since 1951 in a well-stocked NBA league? You have teams like the Golden State Warriors who have Cleveland a monopoly Cavaliers. on the league, arguably. Yeah, but there's so many good, there's so much good talent in the NBA. The Browns have how to deal with the Ravens and the Bengals, two teams who are also on the. the how do you even go 27 quarterbacks without finding one good one? They, one Derek good Anderson one had out of 27, year and they went 10 and six and still missed the playoffs. That was the, that was in 2007. The thing about the Browns, they've just been unlucky and also have had bad bad front office management. It's just been a disaster since Haslam's become the owner, and it just 
every instance about the Browns is just leading to failure. It's a factory of sadness, and it's been said, I called that multiple times. But it's just, they're in the media as often. The Kings are not being publicized at all for this. Because they're mediocre, they're not bad. bad they are bad, they haven't, they haven't been relevant in years. They haven't had the worst record in the league in years. The 76ers the point. The are worst trusting place the process, to be, and they're, they're not The worst place to be then. is in the middle, in any sport. You can talk about MLB, the worst place is to be the second Bills or third seven. place. They made the playoffs this year by Two dumb teams, luck. the Kings yeah. and the Browns, definitely maybe want to take a page out of the book of Philadelphia. 76ers when it comes to rebuilding but that is all the time for us here on one-on-one -on -one. be sure to check us out on all of our social media platforms for all of us here in the studio whose side are you on